about 2 p.m. on a rainy Wednesday afternoon on May 29, 1968, Memorial Day, seven children and two adults were killed in an explosion that happened on this spot at the Hayfield Day Nursery that was operated in a house that once stood here at 724 Central Avenue. The explosion rocked the house when an earth mover, doing excavation work for an addition to the nursery, struck and dislocated a gas pipe. The rupture caused a seepage of gas to build rapidly beneath the nursery. The gas was likely ignited by a pilot light from the heater or the furnace. We got off to determine what the pipe was, discovered it was a gas pipe, and uh, we went immediately to try to find a cutoff and we warned them in the building to get the children out because they could smell, smell gas. And uh, we had about or oh, half a minute or a minute to live with the explosion. And uh, the whole house just went up in flames all at once. What happened after the explosion? Well, we got what people we could get out right quick, but uh, it was such a fire you couldn't even get in the building. The operator of the earth mover, William W. Spearman, 41 years old of Forest Park, stated that he was informed by a contractor that all the utilities had been cut off before he began his work. Mr. Spearman had been working for about 45 minutes when he felt the bulldozer blade strike the pipe. He called Mildred Holt Reeves, the maid inside the nursery, and asked her to check to see if the water was on. Mildred told him she smelled gas. Mr. Spearman instructed Mildred to begin evacuating the building while he desperately dug in the dirt with his bare hands to try and locate the cutoff valve. All of the children, ranging from infants to six years old, were asleep in the front room of the nursery, directly adjacent to the area hit by the bulldozer. Before Spearman could find the cutoff valve, the building exploded. The floor caught fire beneath the room where the children were taking their naps. When the building exploded, Many describe the structure violently leaping from its foundation. Among the first on the scene were employees of Kilby's Transmission Converter right next door. James Henry, Johnny Watson, and Bill Jackson aided in the rescue. Bill Jackson said, the last time I went in, I didn't hear anybody. The little girl I brought out was the last I heard crying. Paul Bradford, 25, happened to be driving by the nursery when it exploded. He knew that his twin brother's children went there. I just ran my car up on the curb, jumped out, and started dragging children out, he said. His two nephews, Joey and Daryl Bradford, as well as their sister Veronica, all survived. Fred Burns, an employee of the Paul T. Donahue Funeral Home right next door, ran outside to see what the sonic boom had been. Burns explained, I saw a maid fall out the front door, or she was blown out. She ran back inside and began grabbing up children. I didn't actually hear the explosion, but we received the phone call at the funeral home. I came over with the ambulance just approximately three or four minutes after the explosion. I helped pull two of the children out and took them to the South Fulton Emergency Clinic. How many people were participating in the rescue? Well, from our funeral home, there was five of us with two cars and there were several of the funeral homes from the surrounding neighborhood here that came over. I don't know exactly the number. Did but the children have any chance at all to get out by themselves? Well, the ones that was confined to the back of the house, I understand, uh, had a pretty good chance of getting out on their own. The ones that was in the front where the explosion occurred uh, didn't stand uh, as good a chance. L.F. Redwine, who owned the auto body shop across the street, said, Mildred Reeves was the hero of the whole thing. She was getting them out until she just fell out the door. Her face was covered in blood and she just kept going back. Mildred Reeves and nursery manager Doris Gardner used chairs to smash open windows, handing children out to safety as their own clothes caught fire. Hazel Beavers said, Mrs. Gardner never left the house. She stayed with the children and helped pass them out the window. The lives of 37 children were saved due to the bravery of Mildred Reeves, Doris Gardner, Florence Dotson Godfrey, Willie Lee Reeds, and Hazel Beaver. Florence Godfrey, Hazel Beaver, and Willie Lee Reeds survived the ordeal. Doris Gardner and Mildred Reeves did not. The two women perished when the building's roof collapsed upon them. 
Most of the children were ushered to the house that stood directly behind the nursery, which, incidentally, was the home of Hayfield Fire Chief J.P. Nunn. Nunn's sister-in-law, Virginia Kirkland, made a list of the children so that public health workers and other volunteers could tell frantic parents who were searching for their children where they were. Two days after the tragedy, an op-ed piece in the Atlanta Constitution posed two pressing questions. Shouldn't the location of the gas lines have been determined before any digging began? And shouldn't the building have been cleared for work of this type? Almost a year later, in January of 1969, a bill to prevent future explosions was introduced in the House. Under the terms of the bill, gas companies would have to stake out lines prior to earth moving work within a 200 foot radius. If any good comes from a tragedy like this, it is the reminder of the importance of community. A month after the tragedy, the parents of a little girl spared wrote that they wished to thank the kind people who have proven that this is not a cold world of unfeeling people. We would especially like to thank the man who rescued our daughter, Mr. and Mrs. M.G. Wheeler. Rescue workers toiled all day in the rain, sifting through the rubble. They finally called off the search at 6 p.m. Police say they are done with their work on yesterday's explosion. The scene today was busy. Hundreds of people came by to look, most of them quietly talking about the tragedy. At the end of that terrible day, the only thing that remained of the Hateville Day Nursery were the two brick chimneys, which the workers pushed down. 